on why I uh, wanted to, to chat a bit uh, with you. So I ended up on your watching a few of your um, YouTube presentations and uh, something that really struck my mind is that you saying your programmers, they switch uh, the project they're working on very, very fast and they have some very quick documentation. They, 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 they're just like this, right? You don't have to talk with them. You don't have to spend a lot of time in meetings and just A-level players, they can do that, right? And we are like a very small mobile development company, seven people, right? And we have, I mean, I have this problem that when we take over projects from other companies, they have zero documentation. When we start a, a project, so for example, we want to just make an iOS app, right, for another company. They have zero documentation. And I try to make a small template, but keep it short, like one pager. So the devs, so we can switch devs as well, something like you. We've done like bulky stuff that with the biggest we've done is like 40 page for a project, but that was just unmanageable for like a small team, like three people to maintain it clean. So after a couple of months, it was not good anymore. And I've been thinking of like a small structure. I want to do like, like a resume, but for project management basically. And I'm hoping you could give me some, some insight on how to do it better or... So basically the projects, we got kind of small in, in scope, let's say a month for an MVP and then we take it from, from there. Well, I don't, well, the question is about how you can document projects better, right? Especially yeah. when they're coming from somewhere and they don't have documentation. Well, I, like, I honestly don't believe in any documentation activity if it's done um, if you enforce or ask programmers to, to do that because they don't really like to, to document anything. Me, myself as well, when I'm writing code, I don't really like writing documentation after that. Nobody finds it fun. It's always, it's, first of all, it's no fun. And second, it's for, for programmers who work on the, on the payroll, who work on the project, who, who want to stay in the project. It's always a threat for them, uh, for their security, because the more you document, uh, the less uh, stable is your position in the project because you give away mm -hmm. information so anybody can pick it up and, and continue without you. Mm -hmm. It's always better to it's always better to keep things undocumented to keep things kind of fuzzy Mess. and vague and messy because in that case you know what to do but nobody else knows. So they not gonna they, they will not be able to fire you easily or to argue with you about your salary for example. So your position it's called job security. So for job security, it's always better not to document things. And everybody does that, and it's just logical. So, so it's like on purpose, you think? it's or yeah, is it just it's subconsciously. You don't do it on purpose. You don't do it because you're an evil person. It's just, it just happens. So it's for mm -hmm. everybody, mm -hmm. myself as well. I would be like, really, if somebody hires me for full time and, and say, hey, you have to document everything you write because eventually we may fire you, or I don't know, eventually we may transfer you somewhere else. I would be a little bit hesitant to do that. I will try to stay, I will try to, you know, to document as little as possible. So this is what I believe in. So no matter what you do, no matter how you enforce them, how much you pay them for that, they're not going to write the proper documentation. Or they will write something which will not be used, useful. Mm -hmm. so they will write you something, some pieces of paper, but I've seen that many times. And then the documentation stays somewhere. Nobody can use it. Nobody actually touches it because it's outdated. It's expired. It's not interested anymore. Interesting anymore. So this is this is just the reality. So majority the, 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 the majority of documentation people write, nobody can use. And that's just logical. So the only answer, I was thinking about your question, well, when you emailed it to me. I think the only answer is that you have to, you have to, uh, so, so what happens with the information? Let's discuss the information or documentation. Let's say you have the project, you have some, some code, and then you have some people who know what to do with the code. And then new programmers, they want to get that. Because documentation is for what? For information. Exactly. Programmers want to get that information. So what do they do? They, they come and they, they find the, the people who know something and they ask them. 
Like, can you explain me how this piece of code works? Can you explain me the architecture? Can you explain uh, what's the, the database, you know, designed here and why, what this table is for? So that kind of questions they will keep asking. And what happens, they find the right person, they ask the question, and then the right person feels that he or she is so important that this question is coming to, you know, I'm that person, the questions are coming to me. I'm such an important person here. So definitely I will, I'm secure here. And second, I can spend my time talking, which is much more fun than writing code. Instead of, you know, making something, instead of building something, I will be just talking to somebody. That's amazing. So it's also nice. And everybody will pay me for that because they will see that I'm busy. You know, I'm not just scrolling Facebook. I'm talking to the young programmer. I'm explaining, yeah? teaching I'm explaining the knowledge things. down the road. Yeah. Exactly. I'm explaining things. So I'm such a valuable, important person here. So that's good for me. I will try to do that. And we cannot stop that. We cannot, you cannot tell me to stop doing that because I will always explain you like, hey, there are people coming to me. Do you want me to stop talking to them? Do you want me to, you know, I, I'm, I need to do that. So the only way to stop that flow of information and, and send it through the documentation, because instead of asking me, ideally, they should go to the documentation and read it from there. Mm -hmm. And if it's missing there, they have to ask me to fix the documentation. Mm -hmm. So instead of asking me for the information, they have to ask me to fix the paper. But they're not doing that for some reason. They're just coming to me. I'm giving them the answer. The documentation stays somewhere. I'm not fixing it because I don't want to. I don't want to fix the documentation. I want them to keep coming to me. This is my like logical interest. So you can, and you cannot break that. What you can do is that you can somehow motivate that people to ask questions to the documentation, to ask questions to the papers, not to the person. What we do in our case, we pay them for that. We're just saying, every time you ask a question, every time you say that the documentation is broken, we pay you. So every time you look at the documentation and see like, hey, I don't understand what the database structure is here, what this table is for, then this is the concern, this is the question, this is the bug for the documentation. And it means we're going to pay you for that, for raising this concern. So they have two options now. They can either come to the architect directly, get an answer and get no money. Or they can go to the documentation and say, hey, chapter number five is incomplete. Give me $5 for that. And then somebody will fix that chapter number five. But, but they already made the money for that. You can be, use money or some points or candies or whatever. But you have to find a way to motivate that side. You cannot do anything with experts and architects. They are against you, they're your enemies. They're gonna be protective, they're gonna, they're gonna stay with their information, they're not, gonna, they're not gonna share it because they don't want to. This is not in their best interest. What you can do is you can, provide, you can promote that people who need information to ask for it in the right way. <laughs> they always like make sure that they are coming, not, that they have two options. They will always have these two options. They can go directly to the person ask that person and get the answer, or they can go to the, to the documentation and say, chapter five is incomplete, fix it for me now. In these two cases, in the first case, they get nothing, but they get an answer quickly. In the second scenario, they get something, some money, some points, some candy, something, but they get the information a little bit slower, but it's good for everybody, because in that case, the documentation will grow. That's my suggestion. That sounds like a carrot tactic, right? Yeah, it, so, it, yeah. so is, is there no stick for the, the architect that failed to update the documentation? I don't think it's possible. I don't think mm -hmm. it's possible to punish the architect or the, ar or the expert for not updating the documentation. You can try, but I don't think it will work because these people are the smartest, they people are yes. the senior yeah. developers. It's difficult to punish them because they're, they're, they know what they're doing. They always will find a way to you know, to get around. So I would leave them alone, don't touch them, let them be the experts, but play with the people who, are, who you can easily manage, the people, the, the junior programmers, people who need information, because they, they're way easier to manage. People who are sitting in the information, the experts, they will be super protective, they will be against you, and you will lose. You can win if you use the carrot tactic, like you said, yeah, the carrot one. Okay, I'll give it a try. Uh, any chance you can, maybe share like an older documentation or something for like a smaller project that you used in the past or something. So maybe I can make a better idea of like an ideal situation. 
Well, we use, I can, I can, I can show you like pro probably open source pieces, which I'll, I'll, I'll share with you, like open source uh, pieces of documentation we use. Mm -hmm. But it's always, we're trying to keep it as small as possible. And it's always like one page. Sometimes it's a long page, but it's one page. It's a, usually it's a README file in GitHub, mm -hmm. it's like in open source projects. It explains everything from, from how to use, how do you start to use it and then how to, I mean, everything and up to the, how you contribute to it. And, and every time we, we don't like some, something or something is missing, then people submit uh, tickets or issues in GitHub saying that the, this piece of you know, text is, is incomplete, this is not really clear enough for me and everything. And it goes on and on. So if you look at our, in one of, in, like I'll send you a link, if you look at the, the history of changes of the README file and GitHub for some of our projects, there are really a lot of changes there. Like a lot of uh, people contributed there, a lot of pull requests uh, signed, you know, associated with that file. It's a lot of changes going on in that particular file. So I would suggest to do the same. Just keep the documentation on one page, I mean one long document, not one page, it'll be one, many pages, but one long document, and everybody should be able to contribute there and get information from there. If it's missing, they submit a ticket. That's all. So ideally, they should not know who is the author of this document. They should not really care about that. Like, who is the architect? Who is in charge? Who knows more? He doesn't care who knows. We just have the document. The document is incomplete. Like in an open source project, if you open like GitHub project uh, and then you read the documentation, you don't understand what it says, you're not going to find for the, for the developer. You're not going to search like, who is the author? You don't care. You just submit a question like, hey guys, your documentation is incomplete. Can you please provide me the explanation? You don't care who's the expert, who knows more. It's not, it's not none of your concern. So you only want the information. The same should happen in a smaller project, in, in a project where there are five, five people working. Still the same. You don't care who knows. The, the, piece, of, the piece of paper knows. That's it. Yeah, makes sense, makes sense. I'll give it a try with the, the carrot tactic and uh, hope it, uh, it all goes uh, well. Okay, thanks. Cool, cool. I thank you very much for, for the help and for the time again. Okay. See you. Bye-bye. See you. See you. Bye.